Ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, it is that time again. My next package from Eagle Moss has arrived. The next two in the line of Star Trek ships, magazines. So let me waste little to no time and open it up. This time, I actually got an email from Eagle Moss before it came, which is the first time I've ever gotten an email that it was being shipped and with a tracking number that I could look back and find out when it was going to get here. That's never happened before. Hopefully that's something that will continue to happen. So let's see here. I'm just going to whisk that out of the way. And oh yeah. Yay. We have the, the um, Defiant, I almost called this the Excelsior of the Defiant. And we have the Excelsior. And of course, the two accompanying magazines. And once again, one has no number, the other one does. So let's see if this gives us a clue to the order. Alright, so this would be eight. Again, the missing number and nine. But let's flip through eight. I imagine it's much the same stuff. The specifications, initial intro and information. Oh, that's quite a bit of information in here. Seems like there's more pages. And we have the, the layout of the ship, with pointing at different pieces of, you know, what's what this is and what that is. Designing the Excelsior, always an interesting part to me. What am I saying? The whole magazine's interesting. Some more design layouts. The studio model, very interesting. And of course, on screen. And next up, the Defiance. <laughs> missing the number. I've noticed that whenever the front page is missing the number, then the back page where it says coming next is also missing the number. But I don't want to spend a lot of time going over the magazine. And we have number nine, the Defiant. Basic opening page talks about the ship as usual. There's the layout page, ship profile, designing the Defiant. Creating and filming the Defiant. I don't know if they had a studio model or not, or if it was all CGI. Because I'll read and find out. On screen, basic stuff. And next up will be the Borg Cube. Or not Cube. That looked like a cube, no. The Borg Spear. But again, I don't want to go into detail about the magazine. I mainly like to talk about the ship. Not so much as the ship is, you know, what kind of ship it is, Star Trek and whatnot, but the condition and the quality of the ship as far as Eagle Moss is concerned and, and what they've sent me. And right off the bat, that seems so tiny. It seems so, it seems long but tiny. And as before with the, um, ships of this configuration this is seems to be the metal pot the saucer and this all back here is plastic it's a bit delicate but you know these are collectors items these are meant to be put on a shelf and looked at and collected not really played with so really 
you want to put them someplace safe where they won't fall and get knocked over or else you're going to end up damaging something. I'm taking the camera and set it on macro. So hopefully this will give better images. But here's a detailed look at the Excelsior. It does have some of the Aztecing on it. It does seem to have a pretty good amount of detail. seems to be about as in focus as it's going to be. I would love to get a better camera once I can afford it. I certainly will. But you can kind of see there's some molting issues. There's a little bit of molting issues right here. Or it seems to be some flash on the plastic. But overall, I'm, I'm satisfied with it. I'm, pleased with the detail of it. Pleased for the price I pay. Pleased to have such a complete set coming my way. The first ship in the series, the Enterprise D, is very detailed. It's very nice. The next ship you get, it's the second or third, you get them at the same time, is the movie enterprise and by comparison it seems cheap it seems to lack detail and, and something that i realized over time because i was a little disappointed too i would hope hope to have more detail and artwork but in reality that's very much how it appeared on screen so it's not that eagle moss didn't put the detail into the ship it's that they we're trying to stay true to the original models and the original appearance in the movie. And it didn't have the Aztec and it didn't have as much detail back then as it, it does now. It was a plainer looking ship. Over time they have gotten more more detailed and more complex. You know, this is a later movie ship. It does have a little more detail and it shows in the model. But we're still not talking about quite the point of um, like the next generation and beyond but overall I'm happy with this it's kind of tiny but it seems to be well it's kind of tiny I'm not disappointed very cool to have it in the collection let's break out the rest of this put that to the side so I don't smack it like I did the Katinga glass as usual we have the similar looking base with the name on the bottom and this tells me this mounts midship which is very good I'm guessing it mounts something like that and there you go I would be rather concerned if it attached somehow to the back because of all of this being plastic I could see that warping over time but not a concern. Next up, the Defiant. Now this is the first time I have had or I've seen a Defiant ship this close, this big. A lot of the ships that I've gotten so far I had AMT models or ERTL models back 20 years ago or so couple of them I haven't. I didn't have Voyager, but I've seen uh, Voyager ships up close. This is the first time I've seen the Defiant. So this is a, a little bit exciting for me. I was just getting it out here without breaking anything. There we go. I always worry about breaking something. Hmm. Interesting. don't have a lot to go on with this as far as how accurate it is. 
but it's nice to see it this big. And then let's get a closer look at the Defiant. This little space here concerns me. I don't think it's supposed to be that way in the actual ship. I could be wrong. I would have to do a little research on that. But again, you got the different colored panels, so and the stripes, a decent amount of detail. USS Defiant. This right here is a bit wiggly. You can kind of get cocked an angle by mistake. Yeah, I'm not a one handed kind of guy. I get a little shaky. Oh, this is cool. I've never had a, a Defiant model before, so to me, that's exciting. There's a bit of a close-up of the ship. Uh, and these don't glow in light. Well, it'd be nice if it was kind of hollow in there and wood, but it doesn't. Still, I'm just kind of fascinated by this. But I don't have a lot to go on as far as the detail being proper. My main concern is that. Should that be that way? kind of don't think so, but I'll have to research that. If anybody has any opinion whether or not that's supposed to have that gap in it, let me know. But this isn't a high dollar model. I mean, it's not cheap, but for 20 bucks, it's not too bad. I'd say it's right at the price. And their customer service is amazing at Eagle Moss. I've had problems and they've done their best to resolve them. And now the stand. This is the part where I fight with the plastic. And will tear enough holes in you until you come apart. Defiant. And this looks like it's rear mounted. And let's see. Where would this connect? Right here? Huh? There you go. Let's Hmm, that's concerning. I have to do something to modify that. I don't like how that sits. Oh, there we go. Ah, it did snap into place. Maybe I've not been doing it right all along. Okay. Didn't seem like that was going to be steady at first, but it's much better. Makes me wonder if I've not been snapping these in properly. I have to go back and double check. These are obviously not the scale. There you go, my next two ships. I'm excited, I'm happy. My collection is growing, I can't get here fast enough. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I have others in the series, so definitely check those out. Thank you for watching, and keep on keeping on.